Rev up your engines! Today I'm going to help answer a very common question. Scotty, all of a sudden my car is getting worse gas mileage. What can be doing that? The first thing to check, of course, is the air filter. I know how many customers I have over the years. The car was running sluggish, getting bad gas mileage. First thing I did was take the air filter box out and find out it's all clogged with dirt. Check it every once in a while. I know people don't look at stuff much these days, but check the air filter. They get clogged up, you're going to get horrible gas mileage. And don't fall for any of those foolish claims that some companies have that say, oh, our air filter will get you better gas mileage. It's a bunch of nonsense. The filter that comes with the car was designed for the car. And a lot of times, if you don't get that OEM filter, but you get a cheaper aftermarket one, it's worse for the car because they don't have as much filtration area in them and then they clog up faster so you get worse gas mileage now the next thing about worse gas mileage is you want to keep clean oil and you want the right weight whatever your car calls for on the oil cap use that because of course the lighter the viscosity the less friction the better the gas mileage i've seen people put in a heavier weight oil than the car was designed for, sometimes these things would get 8-10% worse gas mileage, especially in a modern vehicle that might use like a 0W20 oil. That's a really lightweight oil. Calls for that, use that oil. Use the correct oil. You find you had your oil changed and your gas mileage went down, probably got the wrong oil in there. Now another common thing that can give you bad gas mileage is a dirty or bad mass airflow sensor. This is a mass airflow sensor from a GM. If you look inside, you can see there's tiny little wires. Those things can get dirty, then they give a false reading. I have a whole video on how to use mass airflow sensors to clean cars. It's called make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. And you might do that every once in a while to keep the crud from building up on them. Because if these mass airflow sensors give bad data to the computer, you can get really bad gas mileage. Anybody who knows how to use a scan tool, you can plug the scan tool in and you can read the mass airflow data. If you're really into cars, hey, you can even get a $30, $40 scan tool that'll read math flow and you might just want to put it on your car when it's running normally write down the data of what it's like when it's warmed up and it's idling and drive and see what the data is if you start getting worse gas mileage just plug in your scan tool see what the mass airflow data is and if it's way off you can try cleaning it and if that doesn't fix it you can just replace it they just bolt on and off they're very easy to change on most cars another reason you can get bad gas mileage especially in a late model car you could just have a weak battery absolutely everything is run by computer in modern cars if the battery doesn't have enough voltage in it the systems can go haywire now it may sound crazy but I've even had customers, one had a Mercedes, that the engine would crank fine, rah, 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 but the engine wouldn't start. And I do have to admit, I spent a reasonable amount of time checking all kinds of stuff to see why the vehicle wouldn't start. But I found out that when I put my battery tester on, the battery showed that it was no good and it needed replacing, even though it was cranking the engine pretty fast. Now, that would have never happened when I was a young mechanic. If the battery went, rah, 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 that was good enough to get a old carbureted car going but these modern fuel injected computer run things hey it had enough voltage to spin the engine over but there wasn't enough to get the fuel injection system and the electronic ignition system to fire up as soon as i put a new battery in started up ran like a champ so it's crazy as it might sound your car battery checked if you're getting worse gas mileage and while you're at it these machines also check the alternators and the alternator and the batteries work in conjunction so you just want to test them both the whole thing takes like four minutes with one of these machines now the next common reason i see that cars get worse gas mileage has nothing to do with the engine itself it has to do with the transmission the transmission does exactly what it says it transmits the power of the engine to the wheels to make them spin if it's not shifting into all gears smoothly you're going to get worse gas mileage and if it slips you're going to get worse gas mileage transmission has a lot to do with your gas mileage and with modern day computerized automatic transmission a lot of times it's a good idea to pay a mechanic like me to run a transmission scan with our fancy scan tools i've seen cars like this mercedes behind me pop up four or five different transmission codes when i hook that up and then i explain to the customer that's why you're getting bad gas mileage, your transmission isn't working right. Now the next big reason you can get bad gas mileage is because of the problem in your braking system. The brakes are supposed to just 
do nothing while you're driving down a road. Then when you step on them, they're supposed to squeeze the rotors or the drums to make all the energy of the car turn into heat and stop the car. Which is great when they work, but they get old. A lot of times the brakes will stick on. All you gotta do is jack the car up in the air. Spin all four wheels. If you see some of them, they drag or you can't hardly spin them at all. Your brakes are dragging and that'd be like driving with one foot on a brake and one foot on a gas. Now years ago I had a customer who's getting bad gas mileage BMW. I checked all kinds of stuff out and I really couldn't find anything wrong with the car. So I said, okay, let's go for a road trip. You drive. So I was driving his BMW and I watched him. And he had one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake. And I said, why do you have your foot on the brake? So well, they taught us that way. One foot on the gas, one foot on the brake. So I made up some flimsy excuse to him. I said, well, here, let me go behind you and I'll follow you and see if your car looks weird. Well, the only thing I was looking for to see if his brake lights were on. And the whole time he was driving down the road, he had the brake lights on, which means he was driving down the road with one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas. And of course he was getting bad gas much. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the car. I couldn't find anything wrong with it at all. It was cause he had one foot on the brake and one on the gas and sticking brakes will do the same thing, of course. Now, the last common thing for getting bad gas mileage is using the wrong fuel in your car. Most modern cars are made to run on plain old regular gas and they run fine. But let's say you've got a car that needs a super octane gasoline. If you put in regular gasoline, at least in the modern ones, it'll run okay, but it will get worse gas mileage. It won't be as efficient. And vice versa, as crazy as it might sound, if you put high octane gas in a car that's made for normal gas, you can actually get worse gas mileage. The thing about high octane gasoline is it burns slower. It can take more pressure too before it explodes. A high compression engine has to have a fuel that won't ignite too early. Where a low compression engine doesn't have to worry about that. You put high octane gas in a low octane engine, and it's not going to destroy anything. It's not going to make it run any better either but you could actually get worse gas mileage doing that. Hey, the engineers design these things to run as well as they can on whatever fuel they're supposed to run on. Don't mess with the way they designed it. They know what they're talking about when it comes to that. They have to work their butts off to try to get these cars get the best gas mileage they can. And if you go against the way they designed it, that's a foolhardy move. Now I bet somebody's going to say, oh, Scotty doesn't know what he's talking about. I got a really old car. It was made for regular gas, and I put high test gasoline in it, and it actually gets better gas much. Yes, that can happen, but here's why it can happen. It can happen because your old engine hasn't been taken care of, and it's building up with carbon inside. And as the carbon builds up, carbon takes up space. So if it takes up space inside the engine, that increases the compression ratio and makes your engine to be a higher compression engine. Now, the more carbon that's inside there, the less space. So when it gets compressed by the piston, the pressure's higher. So you're actually driving a higher compression engine, in which case the higher test gasoline will make it run better. But if you took such an old engine apart, if you wanted to do a physics experiment, cleaned all the carbon off, made it whistle clean and put it back together, you'd find that it would get the same gas mileage that it always did using regular gas, and if you put high test in, it wouldn't make it run any better. That's just kind of a bizarre consequence of a carboned up engine. Things are not as cut dry as people often think they might be. <laughs> you gotta understand the whole picture if you're gonna talk about an aged engine, all the things that can happen inside it. But for a normal car, modern one you've taken care of, says use regular gas, use regular gas, you'll get the best gas mileage using that. So now you know reasons that your car can get worse gas mileage and what you can do about it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.